Hey guys, I really want to break down kind of our buyer presentation and why should you guys be buying now and what is the cost of waiting? If we take a look at kind of the history of time, this is going to go ahead and tell you why right now is an amazing time to buy and what you could potentially be losing out on if you just kind of sit on the sidelines. The first thing that we want to cover is kind of these three bullet points. Number one is understanding why the housing market has been so resilient and why these homes continue to appreciate. Uh, why is it smart to buy now and refinance later? And then understanding what it could cost you by waiting for rates to drop. If we take a look at this very first slide, what we want to do is look at the history of time as far as what homes have appreciated or what, what has happened to basically the housing market year over year since 1940. It says here on the left hand side, it says over the past 70 years, the majority of buyers have put 5% down or less on the purchase of a home. And on average, each decade, the home has increased in value by 63%. One thing that we really got to really need to drive home here is anytime you put money into the stock market, whatever you put in, that's the asset that you hold. And then that is increasing here in real estate. It's a little bit different. You only got to come up with 5% and that total asset is increasing. So for example, if we were to buy a house for a hundred thousand dollars in 1940, that is increased by 63% every decade that you've been able to hang on to it, the total value of that property. So as you were paying this property off, the asset was also going up in value. The other thing that I really want to point out here is if we take a look since 1940 all the way till now, there's only been seven times or seven red um, squares here that you're seeing that the housing market has gone south. And so what you're taking a look here is buying a home. It, it's one of the best investments that you can make uh, just based off of the history of everything that's kind of happened over time. One question that we get a lot is why is this housing market different than the last bubble? Um, you know, what we want to take a look at is right here in the middle where it says housing cycle. It says 2008 to 2012. And then on the far right hand side, it says 22 to current. A couple variables that, that make this thing so important to understand. Number one is the unemployment rate. There's a lot less people unemployed than there were back in 2008, 2012. And you can see that. 2008 and 12, there was 10% uh, unemployment rate here in the United States. Now it's down to 3.6% right now. If we take a look at subprime loans, really a lot of that big bubble uh, from 2008 to 2012 was just a lot of like really bad loans and the government's really tightened up on that stuff. If we take a look at the, the five year uh, cumulative of what new home construction looks like, it's down 40%. Inventory on the market is down almost 81%. Mortgage delinquencies are down from 10% down to 2.6. And home foreclosures are almost non-existent right now because a lot of people have so much equity and obviously they were, they were able to take advantage of the low interest rates from two or three years ago. Uh, one thing that I want to show you here is over, you know, since 2020 and 2021, 2022 and 23, we're looking at that blue right, line right there. This is indicating that we have less inventory than ever before, but obviously we got a lot more people out there that are looking to purchase homes. With the inventory being so low, that is what keep that is what's keeping home prices up just due to simply a supply and demand issue. Um, and, and as you can see, obviously, as we get into later this year, you're going to see a lot less listings that are out there. Right here are five of the biggest companies that kind of report to the federal government about what home appreciations are doing. Case Shiller's kind of their gold standard here, the one at the very top. If you can take a look at it, January through May, um, and, and it, just a little bit ago, the numbers came out for June, but it's on pace this year in 2023 for a 5% appreciation game. Even though there's a lot of news out there saying with these higher interest rates, homes aren't selling, homes aren't moving, and homes are uh, you know, being sold for less than what they're listed for. That's not true. Uh, as you can see here, that homes have been increasing nationwide by at least 5%. This is a pretty inter interesting stat that we kind of want to let you know, and this is why buying now is more important than ever. So it says, did you know that for every 1% of mortgage rate drops, so from 7% down to 6%, 5 million people nationwide can now qualify for a home to purchase. So there could be 50,000 new buyers in the state of Utah in 2024 if interest rates fall. We did this off of a per capita base. Obviously, the state of Utah isn't as big as, is, you know, for example, California. And so the simple math would be 5 million just divided by 50 states, and that gives you 100,000. But here in Utah, it'd be closer to about 50,000 people. If rates were to go from 6% down to 5%, that adds another 50,000 people. Current active listings right now in the state of Utah are around 9,000 homes in the whole state. And if interest rates were to drop to 6%, how are 50,000 new people going to flood this area? ready to buy a home when there's only 9,000 homes listed. And what is that going to do to the home appreciation and you guys trying to purchase a home, uh, you know, early next year, late next year when, uh, when interest rates really start to drop. 
One thing that we want to point out is what does the current monthly payment look like if we were to buy right now, which is the left-hand side. In the middle is the no-cost refinance within 12 months. And the right-hand side is if you cost, if you what is the cost of waiting if you wanted to wait until interest rates were to drop? What would that do to home values and what does your payment look like? The left-hand side, if we start with purchasing now, a $500,000 house putting 5% down at a 760 credit on a 7.5% interest rate, you're looking at $33.21 a month on the principal and interest payment. If you go to the no cost refinance within 12 months, so in 12 months, homes are going to appreciate 6%. So that $500,000 house is now worth 530. So you have the $30,000 of appreciation gain and the $25,000 that you obviously put down to purchase the home. So you have $55,000 in equity right now. When you go to refinance and drop that from seven and a half down to six and a half, your principal and interest payment goes to $3,002 or saves you $319 a month. If we were to wait one year and sit on the sideline, that $500,000 house is now worth $530,000. Rates dropped to 6.5%. You could possibly, because obviously there will be a lot more buyers in the market, you could run into multiple offers where it's going to drive the home prices up even further. The cost of waiting is $30,000 in appreciation plus the one-year loss in principal reduction that you could have been paying on the house. Your principal and interest payment at 6.5 on a $530,000 purchase price is $3,231 or basically $229 more than if you were to buy now and refinance later versus just simply waiting. So you'd actually have a lower payment plus all of that appreciation that you would be gaining by simply purchasing right now. We wanted to kind of break out at a 5% appreciation rate. What does it look like here in the city of Utah if you were to sit on the sideline? If you can take a look at it, obviously cost of waiting after one year with the lost amortization and the appreciation is $18,000. If you wait two years, it's 58,000. If you wait three years, it's 102,000. A lot of people are predicting here in the state of Utah that homes, once interest rates start to fall, will start to appreciate around 10%. So you can go ahead and just double all those numbers up and realizing how much equity that you'd be losing out on or how much money you'd be losing out on. One thing that we really want to help you understand is what does the history do um, you know, ever since the Fed has kind of come in to try and control inflation. So if we look at the left hand side, this gives us different uh, time frames of what happened when they had to raise inflation, raise the, the mortgage rates, raise the Fed fund rate, and then what happened after inflation started to fall with interest rates. So if you take a look at the top one with Burns and Volcker, it says inflation went to 7 to 14 percent, mortgage rates jumped from 12 to 18 percent, Fed fund rate went from 11 to 20 percent. Once inflation started to get controlled, inflation came from 14% down to 5% and mortgage rates dropped from 18 to 12. If we look at the time frame of Greenspan, the exact same thing. Inflation went up, mortgage rates went up, Fed fund rate went up. And then once that inflation got controlled, you see that the Fed, uh, Fed fund rate started to come down from 11% to 3.5% and the mortgage rates went from 85 down to 5.5%. So right now with Powell being in charge of the Fed, we understand that inflation has gone up. Mortgage rates have also gone up. The Fed fund rate went from zero to five and a half. But what should be happening here very soon is we're going to see that inflation, it has been controlled since it was up around 9% in June of last year in 2022. And now it's down you know, in the mid fours right now. And it's looking like it's going to continue to drop. We should see interest rates fall as well. And that's why we're talking about purchasing now and refinancing later. If we want to take a look at this over the last decade from 2010 to basically 2020, this is sent by the Federal Reserve here, but homeowners have a 40, 40 times greater net worth than renters do. Obviously, you can see the graph on the left hand side as far as the equity inside of homes and then other assets that they've been, been able to, uh, to hold on to. But as you can see here, the assets that they hold, um, they're creating a lot of equity because their mortgage payments are going directly to their asset and not to somebody else's pocket. And so they're basically just stating over that time frame, over the last 10 years, this is a pretty big gap between renters and buyers. We want to really talk about what is the difference between a pre-approval and an approved file. Uh, really, what we're taking a look at is an approved file as we get all of the all of the documents that we need from you. Uh, as far as understanding, you know, the amount of money that you make each month, how much you're going to use for down payment, what does your credit look like, and then what scenario do we kind of put you in to help you get pre-approved or approved for a home loan. The difference between pre-approved and approved is really just the very bottom line here where it says, you know, close as quick as seven to 10 days. As interest rates begin to fall, what you're going to see is there's going to be a lot of people coming out of the woodworks looking to purchase again. And the way that you're going to outdo them or basically get your contract accepted is the amount of days or how fast you can move to close on that particular loan. 
And so what we want to do is make sure that everybody gets approved. We understand what underwriters need. We get all the proper documentation. And then as soon as we get a home in our contract, we can really understand that we can move uh, uh, super fast. The last thing that we want to obviously ask you about is what is keeping you from buying today? Hopefully understanding these slides, it really just sets you up to, to understand, hey, buying now and refinancing later is going to save me more money than sitting on the sideline. And then understanding that we're on a home shortage. So property values are going to continue to increase here. And buying now is one of the best times to do it because sellers right now are not getting as many multiple offers, which means you could get a little bit more out of them as far as them helping pay your closing costs or buying down the interest rate and getting you into uh, the home of your dreams.